So who in the hell is Jennifer Pepper? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy, Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And this is If Loving You Was Wrong, Season 5, Episode 10. And the name of this episode is Jennifer Pepper. I swear, man, that damn Alex is a sucky bitch from hell. Like, she was literally acting out in this damn episode. Ciao. Woo. <clears throat> Alright, so, um... So let me begin here. The episode picks up where it left off where Randall went in there to try to attack Marcy. They go back and forth. He takes her phone and all of that. And, you know, they kind of, like, go back and forth, you know, throwing, uh throwing uh, jabs at each other and shit. Um, and then he pretty much saying that, you know, uh, yeah. And then, um, cause um, he had said something like, oh, so what is it, you over here messing around with Brad and shit? And she's like, yeah, and isn't it true that you was messing around with Larry? You know, you know, that bondage and S&M bullshit? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh-huh. It wasn't just Alice, yeah. And she was like, yeah, but Alice was the only one that fooled you. Uh-huh. And then he pretty much says that, you know, I'm going to ruin your life. And, you know, and she, and she says that, um, you, you, you don't have the ability to ruin my life. And he was like, you don't know the kind of mind games I can play. <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, and you don't know. Of the, yeah, because what happened is that he saw the engagement ring and she lets him know that Brad proposed to her and now they're engaged. And she's like, and when he said that you don't know the mind games I can play, she was like, yeah, and you don't know how many ways my fiance can kick your ass. Um, so she tells him, get the hell out of my house, Randall, and give me my phone. Oh, this asshole throws the damn phone and stomps on it and breaks it. Yo, Marcy gets a damn golf club and starts Beating the shit out of Randall out of her house. I'm like, yes, whoop Psycho Betty's ass. Oh, crazy bastard. <laughs> I was so here for that. I laughed. She started fucking him up. He's like, you bitch. Ow, oh, ow, oh, you bitch. I was like, <laughs> you told all that shit. Call yourself over there trying to attack her. And she got more, she's more aggressive than your ass. <laughs> Psycho Betty sad as hell. Um, so then he tells, um, Larry, he calls Larry, was like, oh yeah, cause, we, cause he goes to the car, it's like, I'm gonna fix this bitch. He calls Larry and was like, Larry, uh, you need to call me back immediately. Then he calls back and was like, you know what, never mind, I'm coming to your house. Um, so we see that Brad goes to the house, um, Alice's house, and he relieves the babysitter. Um, and he, and he, and she said, well, the reason why I called you was because she didn't leave a number, so I looked in her computer, and that's how I got your number. Um, so, Brad is already like, what the hell is going on with this situation? This shit ain't right. Then we get a crazy-ass scene. Esperanza and Steven are in bed together. Eddie is high and drunk as hell, comes into the damn house, into the bedroom, strips down butt-ball naked. I ain't mind that, though. And gets in the bed with them. And then all of a sudden, that's when Ron's like, Eddie, get the hell out of my bed. And what the hell are you doing here? And, you know, Eddie is just drunk and fucked up. Because Eddie just thinks that that's my house. I own it. I can come in and out of that bitch anytime I want. Because in his mind, he owns Esperanza. Steven pretty much decided that, oh, no, I ain't having this shit. And, you know, Esperanza's like, well, look, you know, he's drunk, okay? Just let him sleep it off. And, she, and he's like, okay, he can sleep it off, all right. And we see that Esperanza is still in this space where she always pacifies Eddie's bullshit. But then he literally, you know, handcuffs Eddie. Eddie's drunk as hell and got no clothes on. He literally wraps the sheet around him like a damn toga. And, 
you know, while he's kind of drunk, he's like, she didn't tell you. And and Steve was like, she didn't tell me. Did she tell me what? And he said that I got something on her. And I was like, mm-hmm. Like, because Eddie's just an evil little bastard, but he was drunk as hell. Um, so we saw that go down. Then we see that Marcy calls Larry. Um, Larry is in the middle of a session with an old boy that we saw in the first episode. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that in the last episode. Eddie had came over to Larry's house and confronted him and asked him questions about, you know, um, about Pete, um, uh, you know, about the three guys, you know, Pete, Joey, and Aaron. And, you know, Larry was just real smug with it. He was like, I know the reason why you're here. You're here because you're turned on by this. You know, you like being dominant, but in all honesty, you want someone to dominate you. Just just come in, just come onto the dark side, um, Eddie, and I will do you good. And I was like, Larry's a nasty bastard. And he already had a little piece there because this is a little weekend. His wife is at the country house having her little fun. So him and his wife got like this, you know, pretty much swinger type relationship where they have outside partners but during the week Monday through Friday they together but on the weekends they can have their fun so Larry is in the middle of having him some good S, S, um, S&M you know pleasure and he's like moaning and shit on the phone when he's talking to Marcy um, and she's like what the hell are you doing Larry are you doing that S&M shit he was like well you're calling me in the middle of the night, and it's the weekend. Oh, I was like, oh my God, Larry is a sick bastard. Oh yeah, and Larry had some, uh, and Larry was looking good in that strap too. Mm -hmm. Yes, baby. Yes, <laughs> I won. I, I ain't gonna deny the shit. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he pretty much says that he'll talk to her. Like she's like, you know what? I'll call you in the morning, cause she was calling about Randall, you know, coming in there. He broke the lock off her door, and you know, pretty much broke into her house. So then, after he gets off the phone with Marcy, Randall, aka Psycho Betty, lets himself in, and he's pretty much saying that, you know, I'm gonna get Marcy. You know, her and Brad are getting married. I want them both served. I want to sue the bitch. Okay, and Larry is in his freak shit. You know, he sends his little piece, you know, to the bathroom or whatever. Say, get yourself something to drink. And then he's still, you know, trying to push up on Randall. And he's like, and Randall's like, I don't know what this Mad Max bullshit you got going on. But and he was like, why don't you stay and find out, uh, Randall? Come on, you came over my weekend. <sighs> Larry is just a horny nutcase and I was so hit for the shit cause he got his S&M gear he got, the, he got the ass out and he's just ready to get served um yeah, and on top of it like you know he's high and he's horny and he's just ready to get his rocks off but then um you know he keeps trying to push up on Randall and Randall keep rejecting him I'm like Randall you want somebody to dominate you bitch stop fronting Anyway, but then he says that, um, you know what, I'll be at the office tomorrow, and I want those papers, you know, because I'm going to sue her ass. And he don't even tell him what the fuck he's suing her for. <laughs> he's, just in, he's just in some his crazy shit, you know, like Psycho Betty does. Just be on the bullshit. Um, then we see that Brad is at the house. Somebody walks in. He thinks it's Alex and Mealy, but it's Marcy. You know, um... And pretty much, they don't know where the hell Alex is. They trying to call her on the phone. It's going straight to voicemail. And she pretty much tells him that the door is broken because Randall broke into the house. Um, and he said that, you know, Randall was talking some shit that um, I vandalized his house. But then she asked Brad, did you? And he's like, hell no, I ain't thinking about fucking Randall. Um, but he says, but yeah, we need to get the door fixed. Um, and he pretty much tells her, okay, you know, you can stay the night. Um... But then he was like, yeah, and she's, and he was like, you can stay tonight, but you know that she'll be back. And then Marcy was like, you really think you know her, don't you? And he's like, well, yes, I do. And he's like, yeah, but, 
you know, sometimes you may not know somebody as well as you think you do. And it's funny that she said that shit because next thing you know, um, he's trying to get into her computer. Marcy, being sharp as she is, was like, try Peppa. You know, that's what Randall used to call her. Mm-hmm. Peppa. And as soon as she typed in Peppa, her damn dating profile popped up. And they go through it and they see that she has been, you know, courting all of these different men all while she was married to Brad. The question is, how many men? And she, they notice there's tons of messages. Then we get the next scene with Alex. Alex is being... Um, Ian is screwing the dog shit out of Alex, you know, on the, um, on the kitchen bar, you know, and pretty much he's still trying to walk her home and she's still trying to, she's still drinking and all of this shit. And every time he tries to, tries to get her, you know, to stop and she's like, oh, no, 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 I, I never wanted this life. I never wanted any of this shit. I hate this neighborhood. I hate everything. You know, look at this body. I had three kids. You would have never known what the body I got. And then starts talking shit about Brad, saying that, you know, I can never get this drunk with Brad. He's like, oh, come on, Alex. You need to really lay it off. Like, with his old sorry-ass accent, with his stupid accent, and his little small mushroom penis. I was like, yo! Alex just gives no fucks. And as I said, she's a sucky bitch from hell because she just wants to fuck and drink. Drink and fuck. And that's the only order she cares for at this point. She is doing the most. You know, he's trying to calm her down. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, Alice, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. Alice, please. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, she just kept doing this shit. I'm like, oh, my God, this bitch is a demon. And... You know, and then she he says, well, what about Randall? She's like, oh, please, that loser. Fuck him. You know, and she says, like, and what about others? And she tells Ian, you are number three. And he's like, number three what? You're number three on my top ten list. I'm like, oh, Alex, you nasty bitch. Really, ho? You got that many damn men you fucked so anybody could be that baby's daddy. And the next thing you know, she's like, enough talking. Let's get back to the shit. And she puts, and next thing you know, he going down on her. I'm like, child, the shit that they do. <clears throat> so then we go to the precinct. Steven, you know, handcuffs Eddie to the, um, you know, to the, uh, to the bench. He pretty much processes Eddie, um, says that, you know, they pretty much stack charges on Eddie that he was, that he had a DUI or whatever. And then there's this other guy who, um, you know, who, who's got a rap sheet. And they said, put them two in the same cell together. So somebody will rough Eddie up. So Steven is literally playing dirty to, 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 um, to oust, to, um, to top over Eddie's ass. So, and he's wrapped around in the sheet and everything. And they literally put this dumb ass in the cell next to Kelly. Now, Tyler, we know that wouldn't happen in real jail. But for the sake of entertainment, we're going to keep it rolling. So we saw that go down. And and pretty much um, uh, Kelly stops um, Steven and says that, you know, she really needs to talk to Lucian. And she's like, well, it's late. And he's and she's like, well, could you please call? So he calls Lucian. She puts, um, um, she gives the phone to Kelly. And Kelly lets him know that, you know, she got some information, you know, Sister Margaret had came by and gave her a Bible with all of these different women, dates, and settlements. You know, NDAs. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about NDAs with that whole R. Kelly situation. Um, and then he also tells her that they just met Terrell, just his father. And she says, it's okay to let him in. She says, yes, but don't let him see justice until I get out. Bitch, you don't know when you're going to fucking get out. So you you expect them to hide justice from his own father? Like, Kelly be on some dumb shit. I can't with her ass. Stupid bitch. Anyway, so then we see that Eddie starts fucking with her. Starts talking and calling her raisin in the sun. And, you know, uh-huh. You know, 
And she's pretty much telling him to shut up and leave her alone. And they just going back and forth. And he just talking all kind of crazy shit. And she says that, yeah, you need to watch who you're talking to. I'm the officer of the law. She's like, no, you're the officer who breaks the law. Which is true. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's talking about some shut up, bitch. You in jail anyway. And she's like, and so are you. And he starts to sober up and he goes the fuck off. And I'm like, that's what y'all ass get, Eddie. Always fucking with somebody. And Steven ain't for the bullshit. Steven done beat his ass already. And he's still doing the bullshit. So then, after that whole situation, now that Steven done took care of his ass, Steven goes back to Esperanza's house. And he says Esperanza's ass straight. Like, you really need to get some help. You need to talk to someone. Because this whole dysfunctional situation... I can't deal with it. And the problem with Eddie is that there are no consequences for his actions. You come in and you step in for him every time. And that's why he continues to get away with shit. I'm like, yeah, but he also got some shit on her that can ruin her shit. And, you know, she's like, so you're not going to stay? He's like, hell no, I'm going home. And I'm like, thank you. Finding somebody in that situation that got some sense. Steven, like, I ain't with this whole dysfunctional fuckery you got going on with your baby daddy. You either need to get him in line or I ain't fucking with your ass no more. And we see Esperanza in her feelings. I'm like, the nerve of her ass. Esperanza gets on my nerves too. Then we see that Rick and Pat are out drinking and everything and you know, pretty much she's kind of messing with him, talking about some, you know, if I tell you something, will you keep it to yourself? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, I don't know. You look like a rat with them beady eyes. Mm -hmm. And what about those curls? Are they even real? I'm like, this goofy bitch is doing the most. And then he pretty much says that, like, she tells him that, look, those pastor's sons at that church, they crazy as hell. Um, but then she says that, look, um, you just need to get a, um, you just need to get a lawyer to get a subpoena um, to the law firm and their um, accounting information. And you'll be able to get everything you need. Um, so I'm like, so you mean to tell me this bitch knows more than, you know, she knows that Kelly's innocent, but you're letting this bitch rot in jail. So I'm like, because in all honesty, I think in, in low-key, she want Rick. But she probably knows that Rick got a thing for Kelly, too. Mm-hmm. Peeping the shit. So... So then, we see that um, Lucian and Natalie in bed. People been waking up Lucian all... They always waking up Lucian. Lucian can never get no rest in this bitch. He gets a knock on the door. It's Brad. Brad is saying that he's looking for Alex. And he was saying that, well, she was over here with us. And Ian was here. And Ian lives across the street. You know, um, you know they left around the same time. And he was like, okay, well, I'm going to go over there and knock on the door and see if, if she's there. And then Lucian decides to go over there with him. They walk across the street, and you can literally see Alex screwing the shit out of Ian on them damn steps in front of the house. And Lucian sees it, but Brad doesn't. And that's where it ended. I'm like, oh, this is going to be some shit, y'all. Like, Alex is just acting like a, a straight-up hoe-ass bitch, and she gives no fucks. So... Get down in those comments and let me know your thoughts about this episode. Um, I got the next two episodes coming right behind this. So continue to um, like, comment, share, and subscribe, y'all. And I'm, and I'm back with the next one. So until next time, everybody, take care.